This is Selma Schimmel at the annual ASCO meeting in Chicago 2011. And we have the opportunity to speak with key opinion leaders and physicians from all different areas and specialties. And now we are joined by a gynecologic oncologist, Dr. Thomas Herzog, professor of clinical obstetrics and gynecology in the Division of Gynecologic Oncology at Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons, New York City, New York. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I'd like to talk a little bit about ovarian cancer. Sure. A little update on therapy. Uh, Avastin being one of them. Right. Well, I think that the, there's some very interesting things going on with ovarian cancer. I, I, I've been doing this for a while now, and I think that most of the changes we've seen with ovarian cancer have been incremental steps, but yet improvements. And if we look at, if we look back and look at it, survival numbers, um, it's really quite remarkable what's been done in 20 years. The median survival has gone from, you know, a little over 20 months to now some of our advanced stage studies over 60 months. So it is remarkable in terms of more women are living longer with this disease than never has been the case. I think you bring up some interesting uh, uh, thoughts in terms of bevacizumab or Avastin, which is a drug that keeps new blood vessels from forming. Uh, we had data last year that was very exciting in terms of the frontline setting. And this year we have data looking at treating women with recurrent disease uh, with this particular agent. I have a question. I remember a few years back when in the earlier research stage, Avastin was pulled because of fear of perforation and all of that. Right. Now, I would imagine that was a bigger risk for women who um, had more bulky disease and, and GI involvement. But where are we at now, women who might say, well, wait a minute, wasn't that pulled? So explain the progress that we've made. Right. It, it, it actually wasn't, was not pulled, but there was a, uh, the a big caution was, flag that came up when uh, one study showed an 11% incidence of GI perforation, uh, so holes in the intestine, which obviously to, to even the casual observer would not be a good thing. Exactly. Um, the, the study that was done had a lot of patients that were heavily pretreated. And so what they did with the frontline study is they did a safety analysis after the first 100 patients and they did not see any uh, aberrant safety signal, anything that was really concerning. So they allowed that study to go to full enrollment. And so that's always watched and it's always uh, brought up in terms of counseling the patients. But the real risk of that happening is probably somewhere between 3 and 7 percent. The PARP inhibitor. Talk to us about where you see this new classification of drugs really making a difference in ovarian cancer, especially for BRCA-positive patients. Right. PARP inhibitor is basically a drug that interferes with DNA repair, uh, which, is, which is critical, obviously, for normal cells to do every day uh, uh, because we're constantly challenged with having to replicate and maintain our body. Um, but for cancer cells, it's critical. And if, we're, and if we're able to inhibit that, it'll cause the cancer cells to die. And so since the cancer cells are multiplying at so much faster rate, we're able to uh, interdict, if you will, and make a difference in terms of seeing a, a benefit by using these agents. It's even more profound in terms of the effect in those who already have a genetic mutation that you referred to, which is the BRCA mutation, which unfortunately leads to much higher rates of development of breast and ovarian cancer but interestingly allows us to treat them with a compound that has a very high response rate. And there's very interesting data at this meeting that actually looks at using this type of compound in a maintenance setting after recurrence. And so treating after chemotherapy with a PARP inhibitor for a prolonged period showed a, a drastically improved survival. Do we really understand long-term side effects of PARPs yet? We do not, in my opinion. And Anything that interferes with DNA repair uh, has to be looked at very closely because, as I said, your cells have to repair themselves on a daily basis. And what would be the effects of being on something for a long period of time? And that I don't think we know at this point. Are there any other key studies or points of reference that you would like to bring up? I think there's a lot of interesting compounds that, that are in the works, and, and I'm not even going to name them individually, but there's a lot of targeted agents where you go after uh, either a pathway or a protein that is overexpressed or upregulated in cancer. And um, some of these studies are starting to bear fruit, and we're seeing good results. 
clearly, while chemotherapy is the benchmark and mainstay of cancer treatment, what we're seeing across all cancer types, and now the gynoc cancers included, is this integration of combination therapy of taking these new biologic agents mm -hmm. and integrating them with our classic chemotherapy drugs. That's right. And it, it, what we're hoping to do is get to uh, an era of what we call personalized medicine where we know all individuals aren't the same and certainly not all cancers are the same. And if we take that knowledge and know how the host immune system will respond to a certain cancer and the various characteristics of that cancer can be exploited, we hope to tailor therapy for that patient based on her cancer and her immune system. And I think in the gynecologic cancer arena, probably molecular pathology is really going to become quite significant and more and more utilized in tailoring these therapies. That's really where we're trying to go. I think breast cancer has been the fantastic model. Of course, there's many more cases that they can you know, then split into groups. Uh, but we're really trying to use that type of model with gynecologic malignancies as we move forward. Well, I think everything you've discussed with us is hopeful, and it's great for you to be able to now see some of the progress, as you refer to, where, where we were 20 years ago, right. which was a lot more dim than where we are today. I think so, and, and as I said, it's the, these types of meetings and the efforts of the foundation and the scientific community that I think are really starting to make a difference in women's lives with cancer. Dr. Thomas Herzog, Professor of Clinical Obstetrics and Gynecology in the Division of Gynecologic Oncology, Columbia University, College of Physicians and Surgeons, New York. Thank you, Summer. I thank you.